Webby Tower, TV5, back with you. We'll be careful for the south. We'd like to make a right turn, and we're going to be uh, flying to the west a little bit. So you have mountains to the north and the east, Burbank's Charlie to the south, and Van Nuys Delta, one of the busiest general aviation airports in the world, to the west. Today, we thread the needle and visit Whiteman Airport in Pacoima, California. So in the San Fernando Valley, there is what I consider the trifecta of airports, which is Van Nuys, Burbank, and Whiteman. Now, Whiteman might not have the traffic the others two have, but with its extremely close proximity to those other airports, it's easy to bust those airspaces, so proper planning is a must. Now as we approach, make note of the four stacks. I'll talk about them on departure. Now we always do flight following when coming here because typically we come from the east. So we go right on the edge of Burbank's Charlie and SoCal will hand us off to Burbank Tower so we can transition their airspace easily. One of the first things I noticed about this approach is that it's like a shoebox, meaning there's very little options if anything goes wrong, which is why I usually come in a little faster and a little higher for these types of airports, just to give me a little extra buffer in case I need it. But I do have to add, I'm extremely comfortable flying HANA. So if you have any questions about how to do this approach, always consult a CFI. I'm just a pilot with an instrument rating. Some of the helicopters straight ahead are for news stations, and one of those was the pilot making the intro radio call. Whiteman is a Delta-towered airport with one runway, 1230 at 4,120 by 75 feet, and most traffic is small general aviation. Every time we visit, Tower has been extremely helpful on both approach and departure, which is so appreciated, especially when it's your first time trying to navigate in and out of here. A nice surprise was the admin building, which I highly recommend visiting. There's a small airplane supply shop inside, and when we spoke to a gentleman who worked in the building, he told us how the airport is working to get a cafe in that building. So unfortunately for now, there's no airport cafe. If you want to use the restroom, I'd opt for the ones inside that admin building as opposed to the ones near the transient parking. And as far as transportation, since there's no FBO, there are no crew cars. Self-serve fuel is easy to spot because it's nearly surrounded by all the parking and the island even has markings on the ground to maintain a clearance of about 20 feet from center line to the pump. But if unsure, take it slow. And as far as transient parking, there's plenty of it and they're easily all identifiable and they all have tied down chains. All right, so in summary, Neighboring airspaces are very close. Admin building is a great place to visit. There is no airport cafe, unfortunately, but that could change in the future. And there's plenty of transient parking with tie downs. Now in your departure, if you want to head south, make sure to ask ground for a Burbank transition. They will tell you to do the four stacks departure, which refers to the four towering stacks we saw on our approach. You forgot what they looked like? No worries. Here they are again as we head out. This airport can be a little intimidating and I'll admit it really was for me. But that southbound departure while transitioning right over Burbank is pretty spectacular. So make sure to study, plan, and let us know how it went. And thank you guys so much for watching your comments and your feedback. You guys have no idea how excited we are seeing how much you guys are tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. And until then, as always, go fly, go discover.